Surf is a high precision movement game with speedrunning elements. This means you control your character, fly around, and the fastest surfer wins. Surfers surf on maps, levels designed with an intended route, a start and a finish. To surfers, there are a few maps more iconic than Surf is Insane by Boat. Sinsane is not its own map, but a haphazard stitching together of several of the most important works, the most difficult maps ever made. Sinsane is not just a map, but a look into the true history of Surf. We're going to examine each section of Sinsane and uncover the information it holds. And to understand the story of Sinsane, you have to understand Sinsa. But this video is only possible because of our sponsor, Leadify a platform that automatically analyzes your games and provides you with tangible feedback. In fact, Leadify is one of the few brands I trust to provide real value to you all. Counter-Strike 2 is just around the corner, and if you're planning on grinding matchmaking face it or especially creating content, Leadify is a no-brainer. It is absolutely free and directs you to content tailored to your strengths and weaknesses. But pro users get a couple of things. Automatic highlights that you can easily edit and download, and 2D replays of your entire game. Click my link below to sign up for free. All the way back in the late 2000s, there were three surfers considered to be the best. Morning, whose footage you've been watching, Habitat, who constantly competed with Morning at the top, and Demon, all three of whom surfed on a server called EGI. There is a cornerstone legendary video by Joseph S1K that recounts their story. Morning and Habitat would trade the rank 1 spot multiple times on EGI. Around the start of 2010, EGI was unfortunately shut down, leaving the community without a home until May of 2010, when KSF came to prominence, which to this day remains the most competitive surf server in the world. Seemingly out of nowhere, a player named Sinsa began grabbing up the hardest maps and records, two of which are very important to our story. Surf Legendary, whose last stage was at one point the hardest level in Surf, and Surf Syria again, which was also at one point the hardest level. Sinsa would achieve rank 1 multiple times throughout his career, holding the most world records out of all of his peers. His map records constituted one half of the entire pool of around 300 maps. Some of the most important records, including this run from 2010 on Surftronic, and of course his more recent world records on Surf LT Omnific. At the height of his career, Sinsa was considered a league above his peers, ahead of his time in terms of both skill and breadth of map knowledge. And so, the map's name, a portmanteau of Sinsa and Insane, is a tribute to Sinsa, a map that not even he could beat. And as a consequence, the mapper boat changed the entire course of Surf history. But unfortunately, we were unable to contact the mapper, Boat, to get the full information about his intent. We have no other choice than to look at the map itself. The first section of Sinsane is an exact copy of another map, Surf Sandman. This was at one point considered the hardest map in the game. A combination of obstacles and speed requirements, awkward boards and angles were surfable by very few. Sandman's last stage used to look like this, a simple spin and three windows that required a lot of momentum, a couple of relatively simple flicks and boards, and a final thin break in the wall. However, in the Sage's second version, another wall and lower floor were added, along with three jagged ramps and flick into the finish. This is the modern version that becomes Sin Sane's first section, but for most, this section is tolerable. Sandman is currently evaluated as tier 4 out of 8 in difficulty with Tier 1 being the easiest and Tier 8 reserved for the near impossible. So Sandman, originally Tier 5, the maximum at the time, is not considered difficult. The average surfer could at least make it to our next section, Legendary. Like Sandman, Legendary had at one point the hardest stage in Surf. Most of the map is simple, some spins and obstacles, but none of the stages passing Tier 3. But Stage 7 constituted the largest difficulty spike in all of Surf upon release. The very end of the stage, this small circular ramp created an incredibly tight and unforgiving choke point. Even getting over the wall using the ramp below was difficult, but those that did would often smack into the hole at the bottom or fail to get enough speed to make it to the end zone. The Mapper, one of the great unsung heroes of Surf, Jesus was homeless, made the last stage without testing it, unintentionally changing Surf forever. However, unknown to most, Jesus Was Homeless had actually created the map with a different last stage, an alternate design played by few surfers in the coming years. Yet, on the surf server KSF, the original design became the only version, which is where Sinsa comes into play. 
Back in 2010, Morning was the first to ever no-fail the map completing all stages without failing once. Even if you made it through all seven stages, you would most likely fail at the final hole. Morning used a technique to ride around the inside of the bowl and get enough units to reach the end, achieving the first no-fail ever. But Sinsa would etch his name into surf history, seven months after getting the first sub two minute run. This required him to use the stage two skip, going directly into this tunnel, surfing around its walls, and converting the speed down into the spin and the fast stage seven strategy. Rather than surfing out of the hole and back into the finish, just barely riding the circle to go directly to the end. By 2017, since it would go directly to the end zone, as well as several other difficult skips. While these strategies weren't new, they added further complexity to an already difficult map. Fortunately, in Sinsane, the next ramp is directly below the hole and into our next section, Syria again. Surf Syria is one of the most recognizable maps in the game, especially to older players, an easy tier 3 map with 6,000 completions. However, the creator Razor was urged to remake the map, as it was considered too easy. So, he turned the last stage into an abomination, an impossible stage. The single most restrictive and technical maneuver in Surf at the time. By raising the final wall and moving it forward, you had no room to board the final ramp. Razor had no intention of making a completable stage, but in fact forced surfers to perform a 360 in this small space, and then reboard the ramp and flick into the end zone. It was possible, and as a consequence, a new tier was added, from 5 as the maximum to 6. The first ever completion is by Demon, mentioned prior, but most importantly, this map was dominated by Sinsa. First in this run from 2010, and later seen in Joseph S1K's history video. And just a few years ago, a skip was discovered, performed first by Baza and later crash for it. Surfers could avoid having to spin, shaving three quarters of a second off the stage, which was later adapted into a b-hop, which is used in the Sinsane world record to go directly to the next section. However, this combination of Legendary and Syria again is one continuous level was not the mapper's invention. It was originally done in the bonus for a different map entirely, Surf Extreme X2. While the map as it stood was never added to KSF, this bonus is actually still playable on the updated Extreme X2.5. This square is a spin. Spins in Surf are usually a series of triangles, simply turn in one direction in the gap. But Sinx decided to up the ante in the final version of Surf Royal creating the most iconic spin in Surf. Like the previous maps, Royal was easy for the first four stages, yet stage five included this structure, a spin that changes direction halfway through, and bars that further obstruct movement. You're meant to move through this structure. This requires a precise right-left-right technique that, in the early 2010s, was too precise to execute consistently. To put its difficulty in context, this is Morning's completion from August of 2011. He completes the spin, is able to make it to the final ramp, and perform the weave. Morning completes Surf Royal. This is the response from other surfers, including Giants, Demon, Insane, and Youth. Yet, you might have noticed, Morning wasn't the first to beat the map. The second out of two completions. The first to complete Surf Royal was none other than Sinsa. While footage does not exist, Sinsa had already set a very low time, nearly a no-fail before anyone else had even beaten the map. Before Surf Royal was ever added, Sinsa had tried and failed to convince admins that the map was possible. This Sinsa was sure of, as he had already beaten the map offline. While Sinsane only includes the spin from Royal, the end is replaced by Nightmare Bonus 1, an addition that turns Sinsane into a map that continues to challenge modern surfers. It is a bonus level to a map called Nightmare. Inside this small tube spin, surfers had to generate and maintain enough speed to make it over the wall. Once on the ramp, they had to flick, dodge every single one of the obstacles above, and make it into a tiny diamond in the wall. It was called the Impossible Bonus. For those daring enough to complete the full map, Hundreds if not thousands of attempts would be spent on this section alone, at the end of a map already a minute long. All of these components were hastily linked together to create the single hardest piece of surf ever made at the time. This is the direct quote from Boat. Got bored, so I made a map that I thought Korea, Sinsa, wouldn't be able to beat. Come at me. 
The truth is that Boat likely made the map as a joke, never intending for it to be beaten. Unfortunately, the webpage for the map was trashed for having stolen pieces of other maps. And as a consequence, full information about the map is not publicly available, including its release date. Yet after its estimated release sometime in the summer of 2013, the map simply could not be completed in its current state. As a consequence, the final section was not zoned. KSF, the main surf server at the time, decided that the map would end after the royal spin, and that the full map, with Nightmare Bonus, would never be completed. The first to beat the map on KSF was Geb, another rank 1 surfer with quite a legacy. Geb, Insane, and Morning would all beat the Shortened Insane on September 17th, 2013, not long after its release. Two months later, in November 2013, Geb would perform the biggest skip of the run, flying directly into the Royal Spin, whereas prior completions had B-hopped on the side. But the bonus, the true prize, would be claimed over a year later, in October of 2014, to a lesser known name, Trax, also known as Yoda. Untouchable head admin at the time agreed to zone the full uncompleted Sinsane as a bonus, and anyone that was able to do it would receive 1 million points. Trax actually received that 1 million point reward, getting quite the prize, as he instantly became the rank 1 surfer. Shortly thereafter, many surfers, including the famous Trafficopter, would do so as well. Trafficopter would be one of the first to effectively employ save lock, a very common practice tool akin to save states, to practice the map particularly Nightmare Bonus. However, in the years that followed, several skips were discovered, continually sharpening the run. There was one that would bring the record much lower. Crash Fort implemented their strategy on Syria again to save 0.8 seconds and claim the record, and others that were more nuanced and harder to catch. Surfers would direct from Sandman to Legendary without b-hopping the platform, which can be seen in Crash Fort's run from 2016 a small head surf on the end of Legendary, giving surfers more downward speed into the next section, and a surf on the side of the hole at the end of Syria again. Yes, this tiny bit. Since release, 329 surfers have been able to beat Sinsane on KSF, with only 120 rising above to beat the bonus with Nightmare, with an estimated 130 beating the map in the world, a testament to the map's difficulty. But this is nothing compared to the true focus of our story. The map you've seen today is not the most insane surf map of all time. The map I'm about to show you has been beaten by just 33 people in the world, one of four of the hardest maps ever made, and laid the groundwork for the most daunting challenge to date, Tier 8 Maps. On May 2nd, 2017, legendary surf YouTube channel Bokuma uploaded Surf Sinsane 2 by Redacted. Bokuma notes that the run is a TAS, a tool-assisted speedrun to showcase the map, adding that, realistically, this map is probably impossible for a human to do on standard settings. Sinsane 2 is, like the original, a stitching together of historically significant maps. But Sinsane 2 takes its unreasonable difficulty to another level combining not just maps, but the hardest skips on each. The mapper's goal was to create seamless transitions between maps with high visual contrast. It begins at tier 5, with two relatively easy sections. The last stage of Surf Acer Bus, which requires enough speed to get over this wall into a tight and awkward board below, and into the outdoor area of Surf Execube Hard. Its next section might be familiar to you, the spin on Surf Valpec. This spin, like Royal, changes direction in the middle and requires a specific execution. Past this point, Sinsane 2 drastically increases in difficulty. The next section, Surf Tree Spam Stage 4 Skip, requires an incredibly precise flick under the roof to barely clear the gap, directly into two consecutive skips on Surf Low Entra. This would constitute the first major choke skipping a b-hop that could otherwise give you much needed height and what surfers call a snipe, launching oneself with the correct angle to make it through both the doorway and the window after. And in the original version of the map, this would lead to a rather forgiving section, the end of Surf Amaro. The real Amaro has a significant choke point in this exact section, 
but incensing two extra units from the areas prior gave surfers a lot of leeway. However, not a zombie would eventually switch this out for one of the most insane choke points in all of Surf, paying tribute to one of the greatest achievements in Sinsa's career, the Surf Juiced Skip. Juiced was a long and technical linear map with lots of spins and tight obstacles, and in 2012, Sinsa dominated. Yet in 2013, Sinsa had lost this world record to Nim, who performed the end conventionally, flying inside this tube and onto the final ramp. But Sinsa would do something no one expected, a skip that had only been discovered a couple years prior. By tapping specific pieces of this broken ramp, he carried enough speed to skip the tube entirely, taking almost six seconds off a record held by the legendary Nim. And this incredibly punishing skip was at the very end of a map already considered impossible. The impact of Sinsa's prominence was so strong that it is immortalized in our maps. And if the surf community has proved anything, it is that nothing is impossible. In 2017, Top Surfer Calais was able to beat the original version of the map, two years after Bakuma declared it unbeatable. The first ever completion of Sinsin 2 with Juche Skip is by Donkey in July of 2019, just a day after its release on KSF and shortly thereafter taken by Red Sea. But in August, one final skip was discovered by a name we know well, Crash Fort, who found that by flicking off one of the ramps in tree spam, surfers could just barely fit through this hole, spinning directly into Loentra. This meant your route was much shorter, but added yet another choke to a map full of choke points. And this skip would not be performed for almost two years, until Joshua, the rank 5 surfer overall and former rank 1 in North America hits the skip, saving over a second on the record, until losing it to the number 1 player in the world, Caffrey. This humble minigame has become an epic unto its own. Surf has pushed itself far beyond what was ever conceived possible. Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to all those that contributed and to the folks that took part in filming for this video. Please drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and good luck sliding those triangles.